Just a few videos ago, I expressed the importance of good track naming protocols for your sessions in Pro Tools or any DAW that you use. If you look here, you'll see that in this keys folder, there is a K underscore on every track at the very start of the track name. And that is hugely important to my workflow. And I think you should implement it in yours. And Pro Tools has a tool to let you do that super quick. Hey, I'm Malcolm Ownflood and I teach audio things here on YouTube. So please do subscribe if that's your sort of thing. And yet today we're going to be talking about track renaming and file management inside of Pro Tools, specifically using a very cool feature in Pro Tools called batch rename. And when I say very cool, I mean very cool if you are a complete music nerd like myself. So like I said, if we look at the keys, they all have K underscore and why I do this for every instrument group in my session is so that if I export them, they are alphabetically grouped together in a folder right away. I don't have to make a new folder for keys and new folder for bass and new folder for guitars. I can just export them all and they are grouped by the alphabet essentially. And it's really easy to know, okay, G is gonna be guitars, B is gonna be vocals, B is gonna be bass. And furthermore, it makes it really easy if you're looking at the little track window here to see that. But manually going through and let's, let's go find an example, the like vocals. If I wanted that to have a V, manually going through, typing V underscore, go to the next one, V underscore. Like that's gonna take forever. Nobody wants to do that. So batch rename is the tool in Pro Tools that will let you do this automatically, more or less. And it's really powerful and it saves you a lot of time and lets you keep things nice and organized. There's two ways you can do this. You can either highlight the tracks you want to change and then right click and go to batch rename and that will cause this window to pop up or you can do shift option r and get the same window quicker so learning hockey is always recommended now look at this window this lets you do all sorts of things for example we can find a word and replace it so this for example says andrew and if we wanted to change that just to be a and d like abbreviate it or something like that we could do that and it just does that to all of those tracks. Let's undo that though. You can also make it clear the existing name, but we're not gonna do that. So we'll, we'll, we'll turn that off. You can also trim from either the top or the tail of it, uh, you know, delete certain ranges from if you want, and you can add a prefix, an insert or a suffix. And that means that a prefix is gonna be something at the beginning of it, and a suffix is gonna be at the end. And insert will let you put it in after whatever amount of characters you would like. In this case, we want to rename all of these to have a V at the beginning of them. So we're just gonna go with a prefix, V underscore, click okay. Now it has added a V to all of those tracks. We can do it for all of the vocals that's get. All of these ones too. It remembers your last setting. So when I pull up the batch track rename, it's already there, click enter. Now there's a V on all of those. So we can just speed through and look at the bass. The bass is already done. Drums, drums have not been done. So it looks like the groups have been, but these tracks haven't been. Maybe that one has. We'll go, we'll add a D here. There we go, now they have a D. We can look inside of here at our groups. I leave uh, my samples with a T for trigger. So I'm gonna not mess with those. Grab these ones, there we go. And we've got it. Now, like I said, if you look over at the track view window here, we can see instantly where we're at. We see the K, we know we're looking at the keyboard section. I'm like, okay, I need to grab some vocals. There's the vocals. Makes it really easy to navigate. And if I were to export these, now they would have that track name in as their file name, and it would just auto group them in the finder window, which is amazing. I guess we could do that as an example. Why not? We'll make a new save, file name. We're gonna highlight all of them, consolidate. And when you consolidate, it does use the track name as the file name for that consolidated file. So as you can see right now, it is rendering a track that is going to now have K in the name. Rather than it just being bleed main synth bass, it will now say K underscore, which is gonna be the whole trick for this working. And we're just gonna time travel ahead to when this is done rendering the committed files. All right, so as an example, I just exported some of them after consolidating them with those new file names. And as you can see, our basses are lumped together, our drums are lumped together, our keys are together, and our vocals are together. Obviously, you could do a lot more to clean up these file names if you wanted to, but this gives you at least an idea of what that batch rename tool is capable of. And if you get that hotkey down, it's really quick just to do things on the fly and keep things organized much earlier on than 
trying to do it in like a finished mix session like this. So highly recommend you check that out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up and comment down below and help this video's algorithm. Super appreciated. Oh, and there's also a free mixing workshop for you down below in the description of this video called Standout Mixes. Totally free. Check that out if that's your cup of tea. Okay, speaking of which, I'm going to go have some tea. Thank you. Bye.